Hi, welcome everybody now for the talk by me. I'm Oliver Kurz. I'm product owner for the SUSE QE tools team. And I would like to show you today who we are, what we do, uh, what you can expect from us, also what you cannot expect from us. Now, um, let's see, scope. I would like to present you the team and also show you a little bit uh, how, how we work and uh, what products we work on. Um, so who we are, we, we want to be the guys that want to provide you the easiest way to provide complete quality for your software. Well, of course, in particular, that means what we use at SUSE and what we also use in OpenSUSE. Um, if someone wants to make a guess, what's our main product? Maybe, yes, it's OpenQA, but we also have much more, and this is what I want to show you. We are a team of eight SUSE employees, and uh, we are in, engaged in various communities, depending on the, on the very software that, that we use and, and various users of the stuff that we care about. And we are an interdepartment team with um, different backgrounds. We are, most of our members are actually part of the um, QE department within SUSE. And, uh, what's this? Yeah, I'm sorry that it's cut off. Um, we, we are actually one, uh, we also call ourselves a squad, and we are the one squad within the QE department of SUSE that doesn't do the testing of the software ourselves, but what we provide is, well, the, the tools. Um, I would like to go a bit through the slides here, but then also walk with you over the, the wiki to show some details there later. Um, what's in our responsibility? So we develop and maintain QE-related tooling, and that means the tooling that is mostly used for SLE and OpenSUSE distributions, namely OpenQA, and tooling around that, like review tooling, or the, the, the tools that either feed into OpenQA or something that gets the results from OpenQA and present it to the users and incorporate into workflows. And they are also differing for SLE and for OpenSUSE. And also we are talking about distributions because they are, well, there's OpenSUSE Tumbleweed and there's OpenSUSE Leap, but then there's also micro OS and also for, for SLE, there are various products and each have their own specific requirements and it's not like we need to do all that tooling so there are some some specific uh, teams that care about individual products and they also have their tooling around that for example how they interconnect with OpenQA but in some cases um, we do that the second point is that we also do the administration of the related infrastructure for example OpenQA OpenSUSE org that's the main OpenQA instance that we use as a, as a showcase. That's the one that is used for development of OpenSUSE distributions. That's what maybe you guys use when you work on developing OpenSUSE components. And we care about the central rep UI instance there as well as the so-called uh, worker machines that are connected there. The same we do for the SUSE internal instance, that's OpenQA SUSE DE, and that's used for SLE development, also for other internal products, and we do the same there. So we care about the machines, we install our software there, but we also make sure that you know the hardware itself is monitored and that infrastructure is up and running on, you know, on a 24-7 basis. What we um, don't do is the QA work ourselves. Well, at least mostly. That means that um, we, we provide what 
is useful for QA engineers as well as for developers, but it's mostly not us that's doing the actual QA work here, so you know, it's not us doing, doing the testing on our own. Um, yeah, when talking about our responsibilities, so what do we do that for? What's our user base? Well, we have SUSE QA engineers, okay? So they are our users, they are our customers, we do it for them. And also SUSE SLE release management. So the release managers, they want to build new versions of SLE, and for that they're relying on, for example, on OpenQA. So they are our main users, and of course, therefore they can also ex express wishes to us or to tell us like, hey, something's not working, could you look into certain problems for investigation, could you bring in this cool new feature because maybe the new version of SLE needs, um, needs to be tested in a bit different way, so we would like to have that. Um, also, maybe indirectly, every SLE and every OpenSUSE developer is a user of the tooling that we provide. So for example, when you are maintaining a package in OpenSUSE and you want to publish that package as part of the OpenSUSE Tumbleweeds distribution and you submit that on build OpenSUSE org to be included in OpenSUSE factory so that it will end up in OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, then sooner or later you will encounter that your package submission will be picked into a so-called staging process, and that includes, among multiple checks which run against the package on build OpenSUSE org, also testing on OpenQA. It might be, it might be a, a, a trivial check, or it might be that maybe the package itself isn't directly touched when you know when it's a, a, a leaf package. Um, so, depending on, on the level where that is included, then OpenK is involved there as well. There are also other users. So, yeah, there's OpenSUSE. Then Fedora had been using and also contributing to OpenK for a very long time, for multiple years. But there are also other distributions like Debian, KubeSOS that um, use OpenK. So, you know, these are all links, so you could. Um, follow these to the live instances of OpenQA. We don't maintain the instances, of course, but what we do is, well, care that the software itself is in the same state. And also, like the GNOME, GNOME project and many others um, use OpenQA. And, of course, our team itself. So we also, you know, digest your own dog food. We have OpenQA and OpenQA tests, so we also use OpenQA to test OpenQA internally. Okay, so we, as a team, we have this uh, user base and how do we work? We mostly follow a uh, DevOps process. Of course, we have some reactive work. We always have, if you're maintaining an infrastructure, then there's some work that needs to be done based on when we receive monitoring alerts or when some bugs are encountered connected to one of the live instances that we maintain. Um, but we also have um, a plan that goes beyond just reacting on work. We have various public GitHub projects. There are also some internal for, you know, some SUSE QA specific work where in the past there was seen certain reasons why something is internal, maybe for a start, while on others we try to uh, publish also these projects and make sure that we have proper open source projects. We use mostly um, continuous deployment. So for example, OpenGA open source org, that's used as um, a verification platform for us, so we deploy there as soon as a pull request is merged for uh, for the code that we have. Then a package is built, as soon as the package is built, and if it's uh, published on download OpenSUSE org, then it will also be rolled out to OpenQA OpenSUSE org, and later on to the SUSE internal instance. And the same for other scripting and tooling around that. Yeah, we um, appreciate contributions. 
but also we try to help others. For example, if somebody encounters a problem within the OpenK tests, then we support them. And um, also, lately, we are, we are glad to see that there are also more contributions from the outside, from other users of OpenK, for example, as I mentioned before, other distributions that provide some things there. Now, we would like to follow the link, take a look on the wiki page. So on Progress Open Source Org, you can find that um, description. Let's start from the from, from the top. So what I have mentioned here as the uh, oops, sorry uh, team responsibilities is mentioned there. What we maintain and what we administer, and then later on uh, we also provide what is out of scope. So you know it's not like we maintain all the OpenK tests. So there are multiple teams within. SUSE that care about the tests that are used for SLEE, which are also in most cases, um, well, many of these tests are also used for open SUSE testing, but they are also outside contributions. And then the how we work section. So we have um, a lightweight agile approach that we follow. We have a backlog which is openly accessible, so you can also see mm, all the tasks there. If it's not some individual tickets which are hidden for the sake of security, or if it's about you know somebody having a problem with authentication, or maybe something that is related to some special secret project, then it's not visible there. Other than that, this is possible and visible there. And if we follow the, the backlog, just, you know, I uh, would like just to give you a short glimpse of that. How does it look like? So we have, currently we have 95 tickets. I applied the artificial limit to say I never want to have more than 100 tickets for a very simple reason, because the pagination and progress open source org is limited to 100 tickets. And I would like to have that uh, limited to one page. I think it's easier to take a look at. Yes, so uh, then I have to, to, like, if you come to me and uh, mm, you would like to have a certain feature represented and then we are overflowing the limits or, you know, to prevent overflowing the limit, I as product owner, this is, you know, I see the main job of a product owner could be to say no, yeah. So, and, and that's the important part because, of course, everybody within the team is eager to help. And mostly, if anybody comes to us and approaches us, we think like, oh, that's a cool idea. We should, really should do that. But in the end, you end up with so many cool ideas that you will never, ever be able to get implemented. So this is where you just have to say no. And of course, I'm trying to add a little bit more value to that by trying to fit any idea into a bigger roadmap to, to have some kind of, of strategy so, so that, you know, it it's also fits together with other parts of the story. So this is why the same backlog we also structure on, on other levels. For example, we have a top level view. Um, so this is only showing a limited amount of tickets, to what we call the so-called saga. So we have used three levels to structure our works. We have the individual tickets, which are also user stories or concrete bug reports. Then we have epics, which can include multiple user stories and um, multiple individual requests or tickets. And then on the highest level, we have sagas. And every saga, saga can contain multiple epics. So right now, we have five sagas where we structure our work and say, whenever we want to work on something or somebody asks us to work on something, then we try to structure it in that way. Like, does it fit to one of these sagas so, so that we are not losing ourselves and we really follow some kind of um, a general idea that we want to have in mind for how do our tools look like in the future. And you can also see on the right hand side from the project that uh, we have two tickets in the QA project, so that's like the generic issue tracker, and we have three in the OpenK project. 
So these three are OpenGA specific and the others are a bit more generic. And then on a daily basis, what do people of the team do? Well, we, when, whenever there's, you know, on, on chat something, uh, we react to users, we try to help them, we keep a hold of our infrastructure, we react to monitoring alerts, and if nothing, nothing of that has happened, then, then we can go back to the backlog and work on the planned things that we can pick up at any time. Uh, uh, it's also stated here explicitly on the wiki what we expect from from the team members. So you can also see on the wiki page how we work because this is the main document describing how we work and we also use that within our team to remind us. So, you know, from time to time we take a look on the wiki and extend the wiki accordingly to, re to remind ourselves like what rules did we gave ourselves like, you know, be responsive over communication platforms, stick to our rules as stated here, show contributions every workday, like work on pull requests, you can see the activity on GitHub or on uh, ticket updates within the backlog. If somebody's creating a ticket and saying like, hey, we have observed this problem, could you help us? Then we also try to be responsive on these tickets and help there. Um, yeah, we follow the DevOps pro uh, process means that of course, we provide software development ourselves. We build, we build it, test it, release it. We also deploy it, and this is what we do maintain ourselves on the on the various infrastructures and monitor it, and then go in that circle. Um, we have. Um, let me uh, skip down to how we work on our backlog. We have this backlog, but we don't have a strict order. So we also based on priorities. We um, I'm, I'm trying to keep, you know, some priorities in line so that, you know, if you're not careful, everything ends up as urgent sooner or later. Of course, we also want to prevent that. So we have some tickets which are high, some tickets which are of low priority. But besides that, the members can more or less freely choose on what they would like to work on. And, you know, sometimes it's good to say, like, yeah, I really feel today like I would like to pick up something that is, you know, a bit of lower importance and sometimes they're like, okay, really I see that's important and I would like to help people, so you pick up the high ticket. Um, we have um, a target number, so this is also something which I would like to, to show. Uh, for that I would like to exit this and Can I open that in this? Wait a second. So we have a nice assistant that helps us to keep track of the of the limits. So you can see here that that we monitor. Sorry that it's cut off to the left hand side. We, we monitor the overall size of our backlog, you know, that we are below the limit of 100. And, but also we have multiple more limits and you can see right now the status is green, even though some people of us are here on the conference. So it's great to see that nothing catched fire when I'm giving a presentation here. So this is live data, so this is good. Um, what else we have? Uh, we have team meetings, so we use, um, of course, we use Meet OpenSUSE.org, the Jitsi instance, on a daily basis to conduct daily meetings and to have weekly meetings. And sometimes we really hang out there for multiple hours. We having, we, we learned to be also adaptive over the time of the last two years. Already we were distributed in before, but then even more we also learned to say like, okay we can really accommodate mob sessions of multiple hours in Jitsi. Of course, after that, your ears are burning, but um, from time to time, it also works out this way when you're um, not sitting together in place. Yeah, what is MOO? Um, MOO is Meet OpenSUSE.org, exactly. So that's the OpenSUSE maintained Jitsi instance that we use. Okay, and now 
I would like to go uh, back. So this showed you a little glimpse of how we work. Points to take away. So we provide the tools and the infrastructure, which is OpenGA as the main project, but also other tooling around that. We have OpenSUSE tests which are running on OpenGA, but we don't do this test, but you need to do them, or some SUSE teams do that. For example, within the SUSE QE department, there are many other squads that have each the area like um, um, the so-called core team, where Santiago Serrate is giving a presentation today later in the afternoon. And then there's a, a team caring about YAST, there's a team caring about virtualization, about the migration of products and more. Yeah, we are there to help and welcome contributions. I haven't mentioned specifically the, um, the, the various channels, but on that wiki page you can find the links or you go to open.qa and you will also find the um, uh, matrix chat there in mailing list and such. Okay, thank you. Uh, questions, additions, something that I forgot? Nope, we are good. Okay, thank you.